Thank you. I'm going to wait until you're done before I start speaking. You all done? Background. Hello. Okay. So several of you have commented that you would like to know kind of my story, who I am, when did I start crocheting? And I've answered a few of you personally. So I figured I'd just put out a quick video kind of saying who I am, this is me, and when did I start crocheting? So I started crocheting whenever I was nine years old and I was stuck going to my work, my work, going to work with my mom every day in the summer of 1989 when I was nine and she was working at this place in Huntington Beach, California called Bebop Burger. It doesn't exist there anymore. Um, I think there are still a couple of Bebop Burgers in California, but not in Huntington Beach. Anyways, it was one of those 50s themed diners with girls on roller skates and car shows every Friday night or Saturday night kind of a thing. And um, I was, again, like I said, nine years old and she worked the morning shift, so stuck there every day until two or three in the afternoon. I would often fall asleep in one of the booths kind of close to the checkout counter so she can keep an eye on me. And this woman who's handicapped, she was wheelchair bound named Michelle. Uh, she used to like to come in there. She's one of those people that orders a cup of coffee but kind of sits and enjoys the atmosphere most of the day. A lonely sort of sort. And one day she saw me, took pity on me, and came in with three hooks for me that I get to keep were my very own, and a little bag of scrap yarn balls just to make things with. The first thing I ever made was a terrible square, like most of us, but I'll never forget, she gave me a five millimeter, a 5.5 millimeter, and an eight millimeter hook were my first three hooks. I did not get to take them home because my mom had, my mom and dad went through a really ugly divorce, so you know, she had weird ideas about gifting things to me and then me taking them home. I don't understand it and I don't care anymore at this point. But um, I didn't, I got to use them all summer long and learn how to crochet, but I didn't get to take those things home with me. And so, uh, gosh, I really got into crochet again whenever I was 21 years old. 22 years old, sorry, when I was 22 years old after my second child was born. He's now 20, actually going on 21. He's really close to 21. So I guess about 20 years now, I've really gotten back into it. And as far as vintage crochet goes, what got me into vintage crochet? Well, it's kind of funny. My son, the one who's helped me uh, with these with these patterns and whatnot, he dared me about four years ago to get a vintage pattern and make it and wear it for Halloween. And so I did, I got this, well, it looked, didn't look that good, okay? So I got this women's coat. I was gonna look like one of the ladies from nine to five. You know the movie, nine to five? Working nine to five, love that movie. Well, I wanted to wear something like their office attire. Now, if, if that was your gig back in the day, please don't think I'm making fun of you by wearing what you used to wear to work on a daily as a costume. There aren't a lot of vintage crochet Halloween costumes and I didn't want to do something too complicated. So I went with my one of my favorite all-time movies is nine to five. Let me dress up like it's 1970s, 1980s office attire. And so I found a collared cardigan and a pencil skirt. The pencil skirt I was able to do pretty good. It didn't fit very well, it was too big, but the cardigan was an absolute mess. I wore it anyways, it was a mess. It, the cardigan has since then beat, look, I am I exist on very humble means. So if I'm not intending like this jacket here, I wear this all the time. So I'm not gonna undo it. But if I make something like for a tutorial, like on my other channel, and I'm not really gonna keep it for myself, it just simply doesn't fit me. I do unravel it because I can't afford to just run out and buy yarn all the time. So I did unravel for the most part that entire costume. Okay, no, I unraveled the entire costume. I don't wear pencil skirts. So anyways, I was impressed with myself that I was able to get through that pattern. This pattern was from, an, it was an Australian pattern and it was from the late 60s and it was really neat. <clears throat> Actually, I say it, the pencil skirt was from a late 60s Australian pattern. I don't remember anything about the cardigan jacket. I 
I hated making it. I hated everything about it. It might be why I kind of don't do cardigans. I've had a few people ask me to make cardigans. It's, it, I had such a horrible time making that one. A, it's extremely time consuming. I would have to crochet nonstop for like five, six days off camera. It, it's, it kills my hands. It's something that I made once, I feel like it's in the vault. I don't need to make it anymore and I don't really want to. I don't like making cardigans. You likely won't find me making a lot of cardigans. The last cardigan I ever made was this one. And that was because I was trying to keep up with the Joneses on my other channel and these puffy cardigans were really popular. Let me show you what I did differently. I like to try to do diff things different so I can stand out. Well, with this one here, I put a big old skull and crossbones on it and that's my own design. Um, and you'll find that pattern on my other channel, not only the cardigan, but just the skull and crossbones if you ever want it for like Halloween or something. But anyways, this is the last cardigan I ever made and I didn't even like making this one. I hated making this one too. So cardigans and me, I don't, I don't like to do it too much. Um, anyways, that's that much about me, man. Uh, I don't think this is going the direction I thought it would. I'm just sort of speaking. I didn't even have any of the questions wrote down. <laughs> I'm just sort of trying to remember. How old were you when you first learned how to crochet? What was the story behind that? So here I am now. Now, why do I have a YouTube channel? When I was 33, I'm 43 now. Well, I mean, I'll be 43 in a month. My birthday is in June. So we'll just say I'm 43 now. When I was 33, I kind of started noticing some health concerns with me. And I sort of ignored it. I had two very young kids. I had a life. I was a manager at a taco joint, you know? I mean, things are happening. Nobody that at that age has time for illnesses. You've got things to do. And so uh, by the time we moved out here, it got to the point where it couldn't be ignored and overlooked anymore. And yeah, my illnesses began to almost overnight, um, ke uh, like keep me indoors. Like we're talking panic attacks and racing thoughts of nerve, nervous thoughts. I couldn't drive myself anymore. And it's really, it's, it's, um, it's all chemical. I have a bad, I have Hashimoto's. Okay. I have a bad immune system and my immune system is on the constant attack of my thyroid and low vitamin D does contribute to this and the racing thoughts and the anxiety and the panic, but I can't take vitamin D. I can't like take it supplementally because it triggers my Hashimoto's to attack my thyroid, which then gives me the palpitations and everything else. So it's a freaking mess. Okay. I have to get it from sunshine. I'm working with a dietitian currently to try to get my diet back on track. I was diagnosed by an endocrinologist that I have Hashimoto's and she prescribed me the AIP diet, which is extremely restrictive. So I stayed on the AIP diet because it was helping. It was making me feel better, but that's basically a starvation diet. I did not know. And the longer that you're on it, the more your body begins to reject more and more foods, enzymes, proteins. It doesn't want them anymore. So now I'm reduced down to sweet potatoes, hamburger meat, and lettuce. I can handle olive oil and I can handle uh, vinegar, uh, apple cider vinegar. That's it. Not a single spice or a single herb at all. No other vegetables. Everything puts my body in a tailspin. I, I can't even function. It's so ridiculous. And uh, it's it's causing anemia, obviously, for lack of iron. It's causing it's it's just it's causing malnutrition and everything that comes with that. So, I work on YouTube now, and I love this because this is my passion. Has always been my passion is crochet. Not always, but I mean at least since my youngest was born. And so I started off doing my own designs on the It's Not Net channel. That kind of floundered, but I met so many wonderful people over there and Rosemary, a friend of mine. But that channel, I mean, I've had that channel for like a year and two months now and it doesn't have good views. It just, it does, it just fell flat. But I did a couple of vintage videos over there. Those videos did very well and got positive feedback, a lot of positive feedback. Did I listen? No, because I'm stubborn. Finally... A few months ago, as you all know, I started my vintage channel and I decided I want to dedicate a channel just to vintage crochet. 
which is why you see me moving some of those older channels, older videos from that old channel over to this one, and they're kind of off. Their music is a bit loud. Anyways, um, I absolutely love doing the vintage crochet. I love it. I love it more than making my own stuff. I really, truly do. Can I show you guys something? I got this from the thrift shop, the Boys and Girls Club. They wanted $4 for it. Look at this. I got it for free. The woman saw me examining and studying these stitches while my husband and kids were putting all their stuff on the counter. It got to the point where my husband had to go, Karina. And I went and put it on a counter and she just threw it in the bag and she goes, you can have it. <laughs> so isn't this beautiful? Look at that. I don't know how old it is. I don't think it's antique or anything like that because there's not a whole lot of yellowing. Um, it is on a piece of linen. It's beautiful. I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to use it. And I feel like I rescued it. <laughs> I love antique crochet. I love vintage crochet. I love everything about what other people did to get us to where we are today. I love watching these old pieces come to life like that cuff. I have it right here. Isn't it beautiful? 172 years old, this pattern. It's just, it's like going to a museum every day. I get, I get up and I start crocheting museum artifacts. They're not good. I'm not saying that they work out perfect. Okay, I obviously make mistakes. I'm doing my best. Um, I'm not I'm not worried about the mistakes I make because we're just here to have a good time. We're just doing our best and diving into these patterns that haven't seen the light of day. <laughs> what? Since before the Civil War, some of them. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, that's about me. Uh, I was born. I grew up. This is my vintage story. This is my crochet story. This is my YouTube story. I do make a little bit of money on YouTube now, but I got to tell you, I do the same thing that a lot of beginner YouTubers do. And it, it goes right back into the channel. It goes right back into getting patterns or uh, yarn. I do have one video coming up. I'm, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for something very special to come in the mail, but it is going to be the most expensive the most expensive item I've ever made in my entire life, and it is vintage. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Uh, there is just some shipping issues because where the material originally comes from is from a Ukraine seller. And so that in itself is proving to have its own issues. But, you know, I'm hanging in there and I'm going to be patient and wait. But look out for that one. Most expensive pattern I've ever made in my life. You guys are going to love it. I hope. <laughs> uh, I am loving hearing all of your stories too. Like with the 1970 poncho and the headdress, I heard so many cool stories from so many of you. And trust me, if all I ever give is a heart, just know I read the whole thing. It's just, it was so much. I don't know what to say. Thank you so much for sharing a part of your life with me. I read them all. I read everything. My kid keeps telling me, you don't have to reply to every message. Okay, yes, I do. When you guys say some of the kindest things I've ever been told in my whole life, I can't just ignore that. It's rude. You took the time to say something. I'm going to, at least I can do is give you a moment of my time to let you know. I acknowledge what you said and thank you. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get off of here. This was a me. This is a get to know me. Hi, I'm Karina. Uh, this is the face to the voice. Okay, guys, I love you lots. I'll see you in the next video.